Hello and welcome back to another guide for War Tales. My name is Saiken and today we're going to delve into the guide of prisoners. How to catch them, are they worth it and what do they bring to the table. So join me when we are exploring that interesting topic. For starters, let's talk about prisoners. Prisoners are a bit different compared to animal companions. They share similar characteristics, but they are yet distinct. Whilst animal companions, once they are caught, automatically will work with you, prisoners won't. When they are first caught, they are going to start off uh, with not liking you, depending on how you're treating them. They will continue to either likely even less or start eventually and gradually going towards liking you. In order to capture prisoners, it's very easy, very similar to the animal companions. You try to uh, hit them uh, down, remove all of uh, their armor and get them below 50% health. And then you need shackles, which you can get or chains, which you can get at any prison. So Tiltron Jail is potentially your first uh, bet. Once you got those, uh, there is a gradual increasing chance of capturing them the lower the hit points are. So if they are very close to death, then you have almost a 100% chance of capturing them. Once you got a prisoner, they uh, will uh, show up with the shekel symbol down here. In this case, a siren has been caught very, very, very long time ago. And prisoners then uh, do have a um, attitude towards you. This companion here is not very happy with their condition. I can understand that. The lower the attitude, the more likely they will flee. So now you are at a crossroad of one out of two options. Number one would be continue to keep them as prisoners and uh, therefore uh, just feed them, but they will never occur in combat. Now, the advantage of that is you can, uh, for instance, cover for skills that others do not have. Louis here does have the woodcutter skill and you can use them. The only thing that prisoners will uh, take is food over time. And if you can make sure that they cannot escape, then you can keep them for as long as you want. Let's talk about the tools to make sure that prisoners, if you... Uh, obtain them and keep them as prisoners will stay with you for a long period of time. So stocks here is potentially the one tool that you would want to look for. Uh, and upgraded stocks can keep up to three or four prisoners, four prisoners, I think. Um, and you can simply uh, match, uh, tune the prisoners to the stocks and they can never flee. So it makes it impossible for them. If you haven't upgraded or built stocks yet, the uh, more early game variant is the watch keeping stool where the prisoners can't flee. And that brings me nicely to the uh, fleeing chance and how to deal with fleeing prisoners in general. So if you want to prevent a prisoner from fleeing, then you need to understand that this here is a graphical overlay, but uh, the real interesting part is the actual positioning of each of these individuals. So let's say for a second trapper here uh, would be a prisoner. Then uh, what is interesting is that every single item uh, in your camp does have different uh, spaces from where you can use it. So you can seeing, uh, you can keep seeing it here. The cooking pot has two angles and a third one from uh, this side. So no matter where the actual graphic display of a character is, they always will have a place where they originated from. And there is a very easy way of making sure that prisoners have a, a super low chance of escaping uh, by simply putting a lot of people around them. So you can see that this prisoner here currently does have one uh, member of the group watching over them right next uh, to him, a second one uh, from cooking and a third one is on the stool. and you can essentially place him here so that uh, you can see three are around it. A fourth one you could put here, uh, which means this member would now be guarded by four people. Um, in my experience, anything above three people uh, will result in a very low chance of a prisoner actually escaping. Which brings us to the next point a prisoner is, is escaping or what happens if a prisoner is, uh, escape. Um, I always thought a prisoner would be gone once they escape, but that is untrue. The very day after they escaped, 
you do have a chance of finding them in the surrounding area. Typically there can be uh, only one screen away. So make sure that you are checking all of uh, the uh, different woods, forests, dense locations or other hiding spots. And typically we'll see like a single person with shackles just kind of moving around. You can still uh, catch them back. That's a little pro tip uh, there because it'll uh, basically give you the same prisoner with the same attitude towards you back. Now that all describes keeping people as prisoner for a longer period of time. Now let's move into the discussion about how to actually make them your friend and what to get out of that. So in order to befriend prisoners you will need to keep them nice and friendly. Uh, so there are a couple of ways of doing that. Uh, clearly not putting them at the whipping block and uh, just leaving them there. Prisoners typically tend to react to a few things. Number one, barber kit. You can use a barber kit and then simply do their hairstyle. I try to do it multiple days uh, in a row and at the third time they started to not like it anymore. So it's not a sure thing to just continue to barber uh, them, but do it once and they will essentially like it a lot. The second uh, pro tip here is a recipe uh, that can be found on various locations, uh, which is called toothpaste. Once you do have toothpaste, uh, you can use that uh, in order to create food and eat it. It's not very um, nutritious, it only gives you one food, but it can be given to prisoners in order to increase their attitude towards you. So that's the second uh, topic that you can do in order right off the bat from day one in order to increase their uh, attitude. So they come in, you give them a barbershop, you give them toothpaste, then you place them at the campfire because not only does the campfire generate a lot of uh, positive um, mood, also, companions that are sitting next to each other at the campfire begin to bond. And uh, not only do they bond, but also the prisoner will be watched over and the prisoner will become more happy. Then fourth tip, which is kind of a uh, goes without saying type of tip, you want to make sure that you are keeping your prisoner well fed. So if you're continuing to do that, you will see uh, basically only green entries here one green entry from the barber kit one from toothpaste one from sitting next uh, to the uh, campfire will say something like they endured it and uh, despite all of the things they are happy then one for being well fed you want to make sure that they are not being watched over by animals because that typically detracts and then what you are supposedly going to do is continuing to just uh, rest for a couple of times. It typically takes between 10 and 15 rests for a prisoner. If you do everything right and um, don't make any mistakes to at some point start to have a dialogue. Uh, if you're then right clicking them, they will ask you to join and come on board. So prisoners, once they join, do have 50% wages compared to normal companions but they also come with very different skills. And it wouldn't be a guide if I wouldn't have brought one of each of uh, the prisoners with me and would be able to talk about their advantages and disadvantages. So let's move into kind of the type of prisoners that you can convert and are they worth it? So we do have a few different uh, prisoner types. Let's start with the ones that you get from bandits, which are typically wrongdoers and hoodlums. Uh, so for starters, when you are capturing something, make sure that you inspect it beforehand and try to understand the weapon category and the armor that they are wearing. Because guess what? That's exactly what they can wear afterwards and they will come with these traits. You cannot equip any other weapons. There's only one exception of a multi-weapon prisoner and um, I wouldn't recommend taking that. I'll come to that in a second. So let's start with uh, the... Um, with the outlaws 
which is the wrong door, uh, which you typically find in kind of more heavily clanted front line, and the hoodlums, which typically are archers or um, assassins. So both of them come with the same set of uh, skills, and you can see that prisoners generally don't have a specialization. They can't learn class specializations, but they instead get buffs that everybody can enjoy. So in this case, we have Oath of Cowards, which... Uh, increases the damage deal to any target engaged in combat by 30% and that's not only passive for him but that is global for all of your characters so um, hence the wrongdoers are oftentimes praised for just their damage increase that they can stack passively they are so to speak the S tier or standard for most of the builds uh, party builds that rely on prisoners or on captives, I should rather say. And then the second topic is this honorable trick. After taking two attacks uh, in a single turn, they gain fury. So wrongdoers with heavy armor are fantastic tanks. Uh, they won't deal a lot of damage. They won't generate too much uh, of Valor, but they will be good. Hulum, very similar, uh, very similar uh, set of skills here, but simply due to the weapon, uh, they are. Uh, mm, uh, they are running a different setup. So you're seeing this one here is a light armor setup with a dagger. So in terms of uh, skilling uh, prisoners or captives in general, I would always go movement, uh, willpower first, then movement speed up to 20-ish, rest into crit. That's kind of the meta for almost any character. All right, from uh, wrongdoers and hoodlums, moving on to the next faction. The next faction is generally the Brotherhood, uh, which is mainly encountered either by running into other adventure parties or by actually over, uh, ambushing merchants because a lot of the hired guns are Brotherhood uh, hired guns. So they do come with a few different uh, talents. Elite the Mercenary, the unit gains rivalry when engaged, which means damage dealt to the engaged opponent is uh, reduced, or damage from the engaged opponent is reduced by 50%. Really nice tank that you can build out of it. In this case, I built a grappling tank out of it uh, with medium uh, armor. Uh, make sure if you want like a full tank uh, that does not rely on in position and a couple of other oil tricks that you are going for heavy armor. Their second ability is dual mastery. The unit um, attacks apply blackout to the engaged opponent. So really the whole idea here is one-on-one -on -one, um, fighting against enemies. I do have captured a merchant or rather a revenger. Uh, that uh, was with the Brotherhood as well. You can see same deal of abilities, but even though uh, they do have excellent tank abilities, they can still uh, be used as other classes. In this case here, one hand berserker type character with light armor. So really, uh, depending on what you want to do with the characters, it's important that your weapons that you're selecting and the armor that they can uh, carry is matching up.